In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The real question is why? Why? It really doesn't make a lot of sense to us. Because here is a person who is dealing with a crowd in a way that may not be good for the crowd. We would call that person today an enabler. And that person was Jesus. That person was Jesus in dealing with that crowd because didn't he know, I'm sure he did, that that same crowd would be trying to follow him everywhere he went, that that same crowd that he fed would be coming back for more and more and more. And where do you stop? Why did he do it? You see, this group of people were totally irresponsible. Maybe it was time to teach them a lesson. Can you imagine 5,000 people? And it wasn't 5,000 people, you know. It was more like 15,000 people or more. Because the writer only counted the head of the household. When he counted, he said 5,000 plus women and children. And I want you to think this through. Whether you blame the man or the woman, there were children there. The scripture says 5,000 besides the women and the children, and so there were families there. Now blame either the man or the woman, I don't care, but you don't take a bunch of kids out on a long trip like that and take no provisions they were far away from home, and they had no food. Basically, none of them had any food except maybe this little boy who had his picnic lunch. Can you believe that? Uh, shouldn't they have been taught a lesson? Shouldn't they be saying, you don't do this kind of thing? Isn't it maybe possible if Jesus fed them there that they would take that kind of chance again? And, and, and was this good for them to do, uh, for the children anyway? Totally irresponsible people who maybe should be taught a lesson. Why didn't he teach them a lesson? Because of grace. Because of unmerited favor. Because God loved them as irresponsible as they were. You know, when Jesus would see the crowds, he would say, I must minister. They are like sheep without a shepherd. Now, I, I may offend you because you may like sheep, but let me tell you, sheep are some of the dumbest creatures on this earth. <laughs> and so when you say, they are like a sheep without a shepherd. That meant they were dodo birds. <laughs> and they had to be dodo birds to come that, we didn't bring any food. A sheep will wander aimlessly anywhere. Pasture nearby, can't find it, can't find it. A and a sheep cannot defend itself. Sheep cannot defend because the teeth that it has are, are, are for grinding, not for biting. And so they can't defend themselves. And, and, and there is nothing in their hooves that can ward off anyone. And have you ever seen a sheep move? They don't move very fast. They can't get away. But the worst thing about it is sheep follow other sheep. And you let one sheep get lost, the whole bunch are going to get lost. And in, in something like a blizzard, there is evidence that complete herds of sheep have gone over the cliff. Because one sheep went over the cliff. Bing, 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 bing. They were like sheep without a shepherd, he said. And so... He ministered to them. Even though they were irresponsible people, 
Now, I know last time you heard in the sermon there was another possibility that maybe these were not irresponsible people. Maybe they had all brought their food and some people didn't, but, but a lot did. And so the ones that did bring their food shared it with those who didn't. That is so absurd. Because think about this for a minute. You're clever enough to bring your food with you. But now these three jokers didn't. You've got plenty to eat, but now you're going to have to cut it down to a third to feed these dumbbellers. Is that going to make you really love Jesus? Is it going to make you want Jesus to be your king because he made me share my food? No. I think it'd be just the other way around. This is a true miracle. Jesus did multiply the loaves and the fishes. Let's get that past. So, also let's understand these are totally, totally irresponsible people loved only because of the grace of God and because of his mercy, because God loved them. And, you know, this, this scripture is one of five now dealing with Jesus as the bread of life. And we see, if we look back last week at the feeding of the 5,000, now this group is trying to find him. And they have found him. And the first question they ask is, how'd you get here? They meant, how did you get here so fast without us? We, we wanted to be with you. What they didn't see was the fact that he went across to Capernaum by walking on the water. <laughs> and that's how I got there so fast. And uh, now how'd you get here? Wouldn't you think the first thing out of their mouth would be, Lord, we want to thank you. We had no food. And you fed us. Did you hear anything like that in the scripture? Did you hear any amount of gratitude in the scripture? No. No. It was, what more can you do for us? Uh, yeah, I know you did that, Jesus. <clears throat> but listen, this thing with the bread that you did, can you up it one? I think it's somewhat like America's Got Talent. If you ever watch that show and you see a magician and you say, wow, that blows my mind. But then a few acts more, you, you see another magician that tops that one. So, and, you, and you see some of them in there waiting to go on, and they're, oh my goodness, now I've got to top that. Well, that's what they're doing to Jesus. Yeah, we, we know this thing about the bread, but now you've got to remember, Jesus, Moses did that. That's already been done, Moses. Uh, Jesus, Moses did it. Kind of up it a little bit. What can you do that's a little bit better than that? Instead of being grateful for the fact that they had food that time that Jesus fed the crowd, they're now saying, yeah, but we want more. Reminds me of the mother that came in. Her son had opened up his birthday present, and he was... He was playing with his, his dartboard, and he was pretty good. He had thrown all of the darts, and most of them went to the bullseye. But all of them went onto the dartboard, except for one. And it was there in the floor. And the mother came in and saw her son playing, enjoying himself. Boy, did he feel good about what he had done. He'd got them all but one, most of them in the bullseye. And she came in and she looked and she said, you missed that one, didn't you, son? Yeah. Let's see what more you can do. They were ungrateful. They were irresponsible, and they were ungrateful. And why in the world would Jesus have a thing to do with someone like that? Because of grace. 
because of unmerited favor, because God loved them. You see, they, they wanted Jesus for their own purposes. You notice they say, give us this bread. That earlier had been talking about working, but now he's talking about giving them something, and it's not what they have to do to get it. Now, if they understood that it was spiritual food he was talking about, that might be okay. But they didn't understand that. They understood it was material blessings that would create a spiritual presence. Wow. Have we been there? Jesus in my back pocket. It's really convenient to be a Christian. Oh, Jesus. I think my bank account is overdrawn. But I know, God, you can do anything. And you can stop some of those checks from coming in. Thank you, Jesus. Put you back in my back pocket. Thank you. I need you later on. I need, oh, yes, Lord. I see there's not an open parking place. But, Lord, I'm going to circle around one more time, Jesus, and you open it up for me. Thank you, Jesus. Put you back in my back pocket. Too often true. It's what they're trying to do. Trying to use Jesus. They were users. They were irresponsible. They were ungrateful. And they were users. And why did Jesus have anything to do with them? Because of grace. Because of unmerited favor. Because God loved them. It's easy enough to become a loser. We become so when we try to be a user. Remember a story about Thomas Edison. He lived in a big house and he had a big steel fence around his house and an even bigger, strong door that you had to go through to get into the compound. You literally, if you were visiting, had to push on that door to open the door and then you had to push back until it clicked. A strong person to do that, and it's revealed that a friend talked with Edison about that and said, Why in the world do you have a door like that that's so hard for people to get in? And Edison, with a twinkle in his eye, said, I want you to come upstairs, I want to show you something. And upstairs was this crazy looking machine with pulleys and levers and everything else. He said, you know, when somebody opens that door and pulls it back, it pumps a gallon of water into a reservoir. True story. Aren't we looking for some way to use Jesus? Have we ever been irresponsible people like those people back there? In the scripture? Have we ever been ungrateful? Have we ever been users of Jesus? Ever wonder why? That being the case, God has anything to do with us at all? Well, the answer is because of grace, because of unmerited favor, 
because God loves us.